everyone. Thank you for joining me. So our goal is to be able to make those you know, cool unicorn methods. And we want to do this because it'll make our methods run better and it'll make them cleaner. Uh, that will allow us to do a lot more with our methods. In order to be able to do this, we have to be able to do four things. We have to be able to read unicorn syntax. We have to understand blocks and vases. We need to be aware of many of the pitfalls of the Avant flow path. And I said many, but there are really only a few. And finally, we need to be able to work with breakpoints. So as they say, uh, timing is everything. So when we talk about breakpoints, really we're not talking about like the word breakpoints, we're talking more about timing. So a breakpoint, just to be specific, are all the numbers before an instruction at the end of blocks and phases. So it's basically all the zeros, right? So before we get into specifically timing, let's go review, let's go and review basic unicorn syntax, like understanding it. So in this example, um, we want to understand that unicorn waits for the breakpoint to be completed, and then after that, it reads the instruction on the same line. And we're just focusing on the purple and the blue. So the time at which it's read is in purple, the time or volume at which it's read is in purple, and the instruction itself is in blue. Everything after that is either a variable, a unit, or like the name of the variables. It doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so with this little bit of syntax, because it says zero here, Unicorn is just gonna read straight through that and then it's gonna complete the instruction for the alarm air sensors. Then because it says zero here again, Unicorn is just gonna you know, not even notice it and it's gonna read the inlet A instruction for the fourth like little bit. Then after that, fifth, it's gonna see this one here. So that's the first mil it's gonna wait for. So it's gonna wait for two minutes because we're going at 0.5 mils a minute and the base is volume. After it's gone for those two minutes and completed that first mil, it will read this inlet B instruction, which is the sixth little bit of the method. Finally, it will, well not finally, but seventh, it will look at the third mil. It's gonna wait for the third mil to go by. So that's four more minutes because that's two mils, right? Three minus one is two. And we're still going at 0.5 mils a minute. It, so it will rate, wait for four more minutes or a total of six minutes and then it will read the system flow instruction and it'll bump up the flow rate to one mil. So in this case, like this is the thing that I find when I'm teaching someone how to read, how to work with unicorns. This is like the thing they get caught up on, which is um, this system flow instruction will be read on the third mil. So it's like ordination, right? So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. cetera. Um, not volume so not total number of mils like so not three mils so you know i'm not referring to one plus three is four mils and then we finally read the system's flow instruction nope it's on the first mil and then the third mil now that we understand that about the unicorn syntax um i want to like tell you that the end block instruction really is the best breakpoint instruction to use and that's because usually we want to issue instructions in Unicorn in a series of clumps. And we do that because it basically just keeps ideas together, right? End block instruction is like sort of the natural place to put a breakpoint, right? So if we look at this like load sample like phase right here, right? If the volume is any, we have one, basically two, because we got the delay there, three, four, five, five instructions. They're all gonna kinda, we sort of want them all to happen together and it's because we're getting ready to load the sample. Beyond that delay, you know, we kinda always wanna look for these instructions like the base and the end block, you know, try to focus on these things as we narrow down on the method and try to figure out what's going on inside of it. All right, so there's a bunch of zeros right here, right? So we kind of expect that we read this base instruction all the way down here to this peak fractionation instruction. All of it would be um, read at once, except for this delay instruction here. So um, that's kind of obvious what a delay would do, right? It delays stuff, but um, we'd sort of expect it all to be read at once, um, but that's not really how things happen. Everything does not happen at once in Unicorn. We'll worry about the delay block in just a minute. Um, what I want you to focus on is, you know, for a method setting start, you know, we would expect that because it's all zeros, 
right? Everything would happen at once. Like we kind of basically, from the log book, we get something that looks like this. Notice there's this minutes here, right? That's because that, that's how it appears in the log book. Here, this is how it's written in the method editor. There's no minutes in between the breakpoint and the instruction. This is how it's written out, but this is what happens in reality. So at the very end here, it's 0.05 minutes. That's metric time, right? Three seconds. That's how long it takes to read this method settings phase. All right, so here we are in Unicorn. Um, we're gonna run this uh, Unicorn breakpoints method, right? And I'm not gonna save a result, All right? Start, and you'll see that it takes about three seconds. Beep, beep. So you here you can see the end phase is written at 0 0.05, right? And the system flow is completed at um, 0 0.05 as well. It's issued though at 0 0.04. So not everything happens at the same time. It was when it's um, issued and completed, but um, not only that, but in terms of the overall picture, right? Not everything happens at once. So let's go back to the slides. All right, so here again, right, we're looking at the uh, system flow is at 0 0.04 um, minutes and the end block was at 0 0.05 minutes. Not everything happens at once. Timing is everything. All right, can't express to you how important that is. All right, so now delay blocks can be used to improve the timing because, you know, if not everything's happening at once and in the order that we want it to, like, perfectly, um, there's going to be some consequences for that. So a typical example that I run into a lot, though I haven't been able to reproduce it here, very frustrating for that, um, is that the auto zero and peak fractionation um, is kind of a classic problem. So if I have a situation where I have the auto zero instruction here, followed by a peak fractionation instruction, these two should be switched, the injection valve and peak fractionation instructions, but just use your imagination. Um, like I could potentially have a very high UV at this point. I do the auto zero and the UV starts coming down. It's like, you know, inside of a fractions, a few fractions of a second, but it's not quite there. And then these peak fractionation instructions get read and I start collecting a fraction. So if I want to prevent that from happening and getting that one tiny little fraction in there, um, I want to have a delay between this auto zero and the fractionation parameters. And so that's what this is. I have a 0 0.05 um, second, a 0 0.05 minute delay, which is three seconds, just jammed in here. And that just ensures that the timing is right. Um, another thing, I think this happens more with the uh, pilot, is that if you have a pump wash instruction followed by a flow instruction, sometimes you'll get a warning signal that says the flow is just ignored because you tried to do a flow instruction while the system was washing. Because um, you know there's different flow running on the system in order to be able to do the pump wash. If I could sum up these last two slides, it would just be that not everything happens at once, and there's consequences for that happening at once. And delay box are a great way to improve timing. Okay, I think the uh, you know, authors of the Unicorn uh, program have recognized that this is basically a problem and they've given you, us a way to be able to look at that timing, um, though it isn't perfect. So um, that perfect, like imperfection is described right here in this box. So in order to see the duration and variables view, we're just gonna go to view and then duration and variables. Let's do that in Unicorn really fast. So here we are in Unicorn. In order to see the duration and variables view, we have to go into the method editor. Um, we're going to open this desalting high trap method, which I probably have used so much I'm starting to mess things up. Certainly have. I'm going to get rid of this view here so we can just really see things kind of stretched out. Okay, so we're going to go to view and then duration and variables. So here's here it is. We can see that we're currently looking at a base of time right now and more or less <laughs> the method settings phase, right? All this should happen at once. Same with the flow rate. You know, the end block should all be read. The first thing that's gonna slow us down is this um, equilibrate system, right? Which is gonna be, in terms of volume, it's gonna be for one mil is what it looks like, which is kind of small. That's not even the volume of the, um, of the flow cell. 
right? Not the flow cell, sorry, the mixer, which is like kind of one of the reasons we need to be aware of the Avant flow path. Then here, uh, we can keep going down. We can see that method is going to load the sample starting right here at 0 0.03 minutes. Okay, so what is that in terms of volume? Let's, let's keep our eye on this injection valve inject instruction and volume. So now we're gonna go down and we can see that we're gonna start loading. Where's the injection valve instruction? Load sample, injection valve inject. So we're gonna start loading at 15.3 mils of this method. This method is going to take a total of 32.38 minutes to complete. I mean, volume, mils to complete, right? Um, in terms of time, I think we're running at five mils a minute, so it's gonna be a lot less than that. 6.48 mil minutes in order to be able to complete this, this method. But is that true, right? Because we can see this instruction right here that the actual time may vary, right? Results, results may vary. So that's what I'd like to show you with the last slide. So let's close this, go back to the slide deck. All right, hopefully I can get through this real quick. Here's the last slide. I wanna talk about these two mills right here. That's what I like to focus on. So, um, you know, here, this is the this is the last block, last real block of that phase, right? So um, this we're at the separation phase, right? And this first instruction, which is watch UV, and we're gonna wait till the UV is greater than 250, at which time we're gonna start collecting fractions. And those fractions are gonna be five mils and they're gonna be in 15 mil tubes, right? So we'll collect those five mil fractions. So here, this dotted line I've highlighted, that's above 250 milliabsorbance units. And so instructions one, two, and three are all gonna happen at once. And three is this hold until the UV is less than 250. So that's this right here. And what that means is that there are no new instructions will be issued until the UV is less than 250 milliabsorbance units or five mils go by. That's what this five base means right here. And since the volume is, since the base is volume, that's why this is five mils and not five minutes or five CVs, right? So right here uh, is when the UV goes below 250 at this pink line and this black line, that's when we stop fractionation. So just a, a fraction of a mil later. And that's number four, wait until 0 0.01 mils and then stop collecting fractions. And the reason I did this is so we don't have to jam a delay block in there because if we have this hold instruction and the stop fractionation instruction more or less read at the same time, because remember timing is everything, we could potentially start the hold and stop fractionation at the same time, which would kind of suck. But if things go off according to plan, Right, we're gonna start collecting UV as it goes up to two, as it goes past 250 milliabsorbance units, and then we're gonna wait two mils, emphasis on the word wait, and then it's gonna come back down, and then we're gonna stop collecting it. So what happens with these two mils right here? Well, that time, that volume and time is not going to be recorded in the uh, duration in variables here. So we'll go back to Unicorn real quick for a split second. Okay, so here we are in Unicorn. This is the method, the desalting high trap method. We can see here, here's the hold until UV less than and stop fractionation, right? So let's look at this hold until um, view, duration and variables, all the way down here. Oh, we wanna be in volume, so go down one more time. Okay, so according to this, both of these things are basically gonna happen almost at the same time, 22.33 and 22.34. Well, it, given the situation that I just showed you in the slide, that's not how it's gonna work out. This is actually gonna happen at 24.34 mils, right? Not at 22.34 mils, because during this hold, right, we're not gonna issue new instructions, and we're also not gonna let the timer tick by um, for the method. Okay, I hope that helps. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please leave a comment below. Beep boop.